Hello kids, Mr. AG here, and for writing today I wanted to do a review lesson over um, concrete poetry because I thought that would be a really fun way for you to spend a little time doing some writing on your uh, week before spring break at home. Um, it kind of also goes along with the inquiry that I loaded in to the uh, inquiry folder that's an open inquiry about things that you are interested in doing. Um, so I have loaded some images here in from uh, one of my favorite books from Paul Janeshko. You've seen it before, A Poke in the Eye, Concrete Poems, and illustrated by one of my favorite children's authors and illustrators is Chris Roshka. Um, so these poems you've seen before, we've talked about them deeply. Remember, um, concrete poems sort of take the form of the subject matter. So on this page here, we see the poem Easy Diver, um, and we see some a familiar picture here of a building, and, and there's some art sort of interspersed into it with some uh, what looks like maybe newspaper print or something like that that's part of the walls of the building. But the, the poem is to the left, Pigeon on the Roof. So you've imagined and seen a pigeon on the roof before, and it's all about going from the roof to the ground. And, and when you look at the poem, you can see the kind of arrowhead shape of it, but when you read the words, you kind of get a, an actual mental image of what happens as the pigeon dives from the roof flies down towards the ground, and then opens its wings before it hits and lands on the ground. So, pigeon on the roof dives, going fast, going to hit hard, opens wings softly, gently down. So you get that visual imagery of the pigeon just flying quickly towards the ground and you think, oh, it's going to hit the ground, but then it opens its wings and everything kind of slows down super fast and it's it uh, has a graceful ending where it just slowly, softly lands upon the ground. Um, so in this one, the, the concrete poem is actually a, a representation of an action which is kind of interesting. In many concrete poems, the concrete poem, the form of it on the page is the shape of the of, a, of an item, of some, some sort of thing. Um, but this one actually is kind of the shape of, mo of a specific movement that, that people become familiar with when they see and watch pigeons or birds like flying and landing. Uh, here we have the, the poem popsicle and usually in concrete poems the um, the the sound elements aren't necessarily uh, a prominent feature in the poem so um, like the rhyme the rhythm um, the alliteration this the sounds of the poem are a lot less important than what the, the shape of the poem is on the page but in this one we actually do get um, some sound elements in this poem popsicle Popsicle, popsicle, tickle, tongue fun, licksicle, sticksicle, please don't run, dripsicle, slipsicle, melt, melt, tricky, stopsicle, plopsicle, and all sticky. And so again, we've got the shape of the popsicle here, but in the words, we get the experience of of eating a popsicle and it's probably a warm day and it's starting to melt and and we've all held popsicles in our hands before and in the stick when it melts down you know our fingers the sugar gets on our fingers and as it dries it becomes sticky here we have um, a, a picture of what looks like a stem and a flower and it's called no pretending so the title itself is interesting because it's not really indicative of what the poem might be about. It's called No Pretending. Right, right at the top here, I'm going to start here. Dandelion, bright dandelion. You are not for anything. You just are. So it's sort of talking to the dandelion. Um, and and expressing that the dandelion is it just is it's it's not for anything or anybody it just is um, no pretending 
It's an interesting one. Here we have the um, swan and shadow. Um, I'm not going to read this, but you can you can feel free to stop it here and zoom in and read it on your own. But you've seen a swan sitting on a pond or a lake before, and we've got the surface of the lake here and the mirror image underneath it. Um, and so that's what this poem is is that gives us the image of. Here we've got balloon as big as ball as round as sun i tug and pull you when you run and when wind blows i say politely hold me tightly the balloon is actually speaking to the the person who's holding the balloon um, not wanting to be let go very interesting but the poem is in the shape of a balloon you can see with a string and the um, the namesake of the other poetry anthology that I like, um, A Kick in the Head, this is the poem that uh, Paul Janeshko named his other book, A Kick in the Head, after. And it's a, it's a poem about poetry. Uh, I love it when writers write about writing. It's kind of funny um, and in, in, interesting, the insight that you might get from it. So this is a concrete poem about poetry. Poetry jumpstarts my imagination. It opens its arms to me, jabs me in the heart. Thump, thump. Poetry gives me a kick in the head. Poetry gives me a kick. So um, some interesting aspects of this poem, A Kick in the Head by Joan Bransfield Graham, is that the words in the head talk about the imagination, where, where your imagination lives inside your brain. And then the words in the arms um, talk about the arms and an and action that the arms and hands might do. And then it mentions the heart and goes straight to the heart. Thump, thump. So right here over the heart of the character in the page, you've got a heart, heartbeat words. And then you've got down in the legs, a kick, a kick. Uh, I just find this poem to be very, very, very interesting. The way they doubled up on imagery and the use of the words in the specific parts of the image. And last but not least, um, I've got this giraffe poem. Um, and so you can see it's a poem about a giraffe in the shape of a giraffe. And I'm not going to talk anymore today. I want to. I want you to go ahead and close up your video and spend a little time thinking, um, imagining, doing some of that work that poets do when when they dream up uh, new new things to give creative images to the reader. Um, I, I wish you luck. I want you to have fun with this and do your best as always. And take the next 20 minutes or so to get some poetry written. Enjoy.